let's, let's get started. So, Father, <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for everything. Everything you've done just to make sure we have a chance to know who you are, get to know you, and just be friends with you. Thank you for your peace and your strength and how much better your wisdom is than ours. So, thanks for uh, sharing all that with us, teaching us how to be good stewards of it. Amen. Anyway, um, oh, so many places I wanted to start. Uh, hmm. Well, there was a uh, I transferred not really jobs. I just moved to a different location a week or so ago. And so, of course, all these big wigs are, they just converged on this new area, all the, the, the corporate people. So they're all chipping in, you know, how, uh, how the, the important ones do. And uh, a bunch of people that I worked with before also came to this new place. And we've got a pretty good system in how we do things, and it works for us. And, uh, and, then, and then these regional guys show up. And, you know, they're helping or whatever. But, like, I'll be, uh, I got the way I do things, and, uh, you know, everybody I've worked with knows it works. So we just kind of, we do our things, and it all comes together. For the last week, <laughs> it's uh, like I'll just be trying to mind my business and do what needs to be done, and then so we had we had several guys from uh, the corporate office coming and helping out, and I'd be doing one thing, I'd move on to the next thing, so I because I was waiting on something to happen before I could come back and finish my initial task, so I wrap up the thing I moved on to, and then one of these regionals pulls me aside. And he's like, "Hey, uh, you know, just you gotta, you gotta, you gotta clean up when you're done with this task before you move on to the next one, because otherwise it's just kind of a mess. And you gotta be training people how to do this, and blah blah blah." And I tried explaining to him my reasoning for what I was doing, because uh, I left this huge stack of empty boxes by where I was, because I wasn't done there, but I was waiting on some other stuff to show up before I could finish. <laughs> So I tried telling him that. I was like, well, see, dude, I was using it as a beacon, so I'd remember that I'd to, to go back there and finish. He's like, well, yeah, okay, but you know what? Just got to clean up when you're done. So, yeah, I'd, you know, I completely understand that, but I wasn't done. Well, yeah, just just clean up when you're finished with this section. You just soon before you move on to the next one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Pete's not going to win this one. <sighs> and then uh, it's, it's been like that for <laughs> All week. <laughs> and then uh, there's been two or three other faces that have done the same thing. And just organizing the uh, the warehouse with all of our backstop, all, uh, just all that stuff, that's uh, that's like my bread and butter. That's, that's my thing. <laughs> and these guys that came in from the corporate office, they didn't know that. So they were telling me how they would do it, and they think I should do it this way. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's that's cool. Let's go do something else. And you know, I'd act interested in like that's what I was gonna do, and then I ended up doing it my way anyway. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, that first day, when we just got inundated with stuff, it was a terrible day. But uh, at the end of that day, the regional that was trying to boss me around, do things his way that day, he came up to my immediate boss. He's like, you know, for uh, for grand opening, this isn't an ideal situation, but uh, this back area is looking pretty good. Of course, he didn't say it to me. I had to eavesdrop to hear it. <laughs> uh, so it seemed like at least every other day that was going on. So I pulled my boss aside a couple times. And I was like, hey, man, I just wanted you to know how much I appreciate you just leaving me alone. 
<laughs> just let me do my thing and trust in that I'm not incompetent. <laughs> he said, well, uh, thanks. <laughs> but that being said, it's been an interesting week. And, uh, you know, I like to... Uh, I like to just see how I can tie stuff in to uh, to a relationship with God. So, of course, it wasn't hard to see a correlation with being told the right way to do something just because it's the way somebody else would do it, and uh, how that's not <laughs> that's not the way we're supposed to approach God so much. <laughs> but how many people just don't know better? I didn't know better, man. I didn't. <laughs> I don't even know how much I didn't know. I'm mean, like looking back on it now. I can acknowledge, yeah, I was uh, I was pretty green when I first started in this. I didn't know that that uh, that Judaism was a bloodline. I thought it was just a religion. <laughs> I didn't know. Ah, uh, all kinds of stuff. I can go on and on. I can dig my hole all day long. <laughs> but <laughs> in order to uh, Salvage some kind of respect here. I'll, we'll just we'll just keep it at how much how I didn't know a whole lot. And uh, I remember when I first started really wanting more God. Not quite sure how. I'd read stuff like uh, like in Matthew six, man. You know, hey, look at the birds, man. They uh. They don't really worry about what is going to happen tomorrow. They have what they need to get by today. And look at the lilies. They don't struggle and fret and stress. It just happens. And they're gorgeous. And then I'd look at that. Man, as soon as I'm done worrying, I have arrived. And then uh, that's something God's working with me on right now. <laughs> it's like I can look at that. And then I look and see how much more I have to learn. And uh, it's, I can't see the end of that. And same thing. Uh, it was in a few different Gospels, but the one that struck me was in Luke. I think, talking about, hey, don't worry what you're going to say when you get in front of these people or get put in these situations. Holy Spirit's going to give you the words you need to say at that time. I'd, I'd look at that, I'd think the same exact thing. Like, man, I have arrived once I get there. Once I stop worrying, <laughs> I have entered ministry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. That's uh, that's like preschool faith, man. That's, that's starting to understand what faith is. Not even really hardly implementing it. It's just grasping the relationship with God that we're supposed to have. I didn't know that. All I knew was the God that I was told about on uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays. And the people I was listening to didn't know God either. So, <laughs> I, there was no hope. <laughs> um, man. Yeah. But sure enough, man, I earned my salvation going and and getting the college group area set up every Monday night, getting it set up for the youth group Wednesday nights. Man, I was there doing all this volunteer stuff. I was gonna go to heaven because God, look how much, look how many hours I put into this church, into this building, into serving you. you can look at it now. <laughs> I was barely serving God, <laughs> barely. Uh, even if that's only because of what that church stood for. <laughs> that was the kind of church where they're like, God, we love you, but we don't want too much of you because then we'll be accountable and we can't have that. We just want you in this little box and we'll keep our money box right beside that box. <laughs> Man. So now, one... Uh, well, something very, very, very near 
and dear to my heart is just making sure people, especially the ones that have been stuck in religion, man, or are stuck in religion, that they at least get an opportunity to realize that they don't have to go through a person. Well, they don't have to go through their pastor to know God. Obviously, we've got to go through Jesus. <laughs> but somebody, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? That it's their relationship with God is so much simpler than logging time into a church, doing the checks and balances of all the things we're supposed to do as a good little Christian. Man, I hate seeing people slave away at that just because of how fruitless it is. Man, I'm glad I, I got as much of a head start as I did on it. And I still feel bad for how much time I wasted in those churches. So, man, imagine being so much older <laughs> and having decades to look back on and realize that there was nothing there that lasts. When I first got a hold of... Uh, of praying in tongues and and all of that kind of thing, I couldn't help but uh, shout it from the rooftops to all the friends I grew up in church with. <laughs> uh, I haven't met a single person who's on this same path that has not lost friends over their enthusiasm for finding more of God. <laughs> and uh, man <laughs> this one guy man I've known him since second grade he was uh, he was my video game buddy he was the one like he was we were the well we did a whole bunch of stuff together man track basketball video games did stuff around the school where we went to it's just, we were close. Got a hold of this message, man. I figured, dude, who wouldn't want to know about this? Uh, it turns out he didn't. <laughs> I uh, started talking to him about healing. Well, I started talking to him about fasting first. And he said he couldn't do that because of some kidney problem. So, of course, hey, let's talk about healing then. And, uh, of course, that went even further south than talking about fasting. And I just kept asking God, I was like, God, what? why don't people want more of this? <laughs> what's the, are they blind to something here? What is, what's going on? And, uh, <laughs> oh, every time I have an encounter like that, or think about having an encounter like that, like what I had with my real good friend, <sighs> what he told me about that guy, was that uh, he put too much time in to the foundation that he built for himself, into his doctrine, into his church, to to give it up. There was too much pride there in the things he'd accomplished in that church, in that denomination, and that he was not, he wasn't going to forfeit it. With those people, man, I pity them when they got to meet God face to face. <laughs> I would not want to be in their shoes because he's going to have a few questions for them about the way they lived and about the things they held on to, their priorities, the things they held dear, things like their works, as if what they did help them attain some kind of righteousness. Did Paul say something about that? I'll have to look it up. But it's not about... Well... In, uh, I don't know which one of Paul's epistles, man. I just kind of soak them all in. 
but he was talking about, uh, he was telling this church, he was like, hey, I'm having to repeat myself a lot, and uh, for me it gets kind of old, but for you guys, it keeps you on the straight and narrow, man. It's, 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 it's a fail-safe for you guys. It's a safety feature. I don't even remember what I said before that. <laughs> it's been, sorry, it's been a long week. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, religion. <laughs> what else would I talk about, right? There is a uh, there is a good way of doing things. I mentioned before about being a steward of other people's souls, and. Uh, that's not to say that we're supposed to take ownership in what they become just because we help them. All we're supposed to do, man, is just be an arrow towards God. However we can be, whatever function that, well, whatever way we can, that's what we're supposed to be doing for other people. So there's a there's ways we can direct people to God, but we're directing them to God. And we're not directing them to a church, to a ministry, to anything like that. And uh, that's something to keep in mind. We're stewards on this planet. What do we own that we're going to take with us? Man, it's the only thing. The only thing that we're gonna take with us is our soul. Well, yeah. And we show it to God, and He's like, "Hey, how come? Uh, how come you don't work on this anymore? You had all the equipment. What? Uh, what? What happened?" And uh, what are we gonna say to Him then? <laughs> uh, hmm. So really, it's about having a simple heart, a teachable, humble heart. And that is, it's as simple as that. We pray, and uh, now we pray in tongues. God starts showing us the things that are between us and Him. And we're like, hey, that's, uh, that's me. I don't like that I'm seeing it. I don't like that trait. That's why I hit it. And God's like, well, yeah, you hit it, but that don't mean it's gone. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's keeping you. Doesn't mean it's not keeping you from me. And we're like, well, God, this is part of what made me who I am. And God's like, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to remake you. So give it up, son. And then the battle begins. <laughs> well, and then the battle's supposed to begin. A bunch of people end up just running away. <laughs> and God only knows what kind of life they live now. Like they almost got there, and then they're like, no, this is too much. I can't do it. Bye. It's not worth it, God. I lied. I'm sorry. Peace out. You love me, right? That's, uh, that's no way to live. So, one thing that, uh, well, <laughs> here's something for you. A few months ago, God told me something, just, just a hint, just a little snippet. And uh, it was like, kind of like, you know, you live in a neighborhood, summertime, you smell somebody's grilling something, but you're just not quite sure what. And it smells phenomenal. But you don't exactly know what it is. But it haunts you. It's like that's that's grilling perfection right there, and it's out of my reach. And that was, uh, man, it's like God just gave me a hint of something. And I was like, wait, that's, that's it? God, I'm going to need a whole lot more than that. And... Uh, 
So I would, uh, man, I'd run myself into the ground trying to get God's answer. <sighs> working for it and working for it and working for it and begging and pleading and trying to formulate all these possibilities of answers for myself with my own head. And uh, went on like that for months. <laughs> from July until last week. So that would be yeah, four months. And uh, finally, man, I could, I could feel myself just start, starting to break there a couple weeks ago. And it's like, all right, God, I see you're not going to play by my rules, so uh, what do I have to do? <laughs> And then he started telling me, man, you gotta stop making assumptions, man. You gotta put your mind on a leash. So if I do tell you something, just don't start running off down the street with everything that you think could happen, or should happen, or might happen, or would happen, or any of these possibilities, or what you think you should be doing, or what's expected of you. And you keep your mind on a real short leash, so none of that happens. And then we'll talk again. So I spent a uh, I spent a while doing that, just kind of, like I'd catch my mind start wandering, like I'd think about just that little hint of what God told me, I'd catch my mind start wandering over this way, and then I'd just cut it off. Like, no, we are stopping this game, because I'm going to find out for sure. 20 minutes later, <laughs> start wandering off again, same thing, man, it was... It was uh, very, very tedious. <laughs> but it's about breaking a habit, man. You, you don't break a habit in one sitting. Unless it's a very, <laughs> a very long sitting. <laughs> but it was something that I would, uh, I'd catch and I'd correct. And then I'd catch it and correct it. And then it gradually happened less and less and less. And then I started finding peace. And uh, it's like, well, God, I guess, uh, I guess you're in charge no matter what. So come what may, man. I'm just going to do my best to follow you. And uh, <laughs> we'll see where I end up, huh? That was when things really started turning around. It started giving me a little bit more here and here and there. And then one night, it was uh, well, like the whole day. I I hear I knew something was coming. You know, like in those movies where they're in a sewer and then somebody cuts loose the water line and then they hear this roaring towards them, and then they're thinking, oh. Crap. So they're trying to escape the sewer before all this awful sludge water takes them over. And it was kind of like that, man. I, I, it was like in the distance. I knew something was coming up on me. And uh, <laughs> I ended up just sitting in a recliner and playing solitaire for, uh, and listening to uh, Hurt by Johnny Cash over and over and over and over, just on repeat for like <laughs> like two hours, <laughs> maybe longer, man. It could have been two and a half, three hours. That's like a four minute song. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, man, that whatever it was in the distance that I knew was coming, it was right at my door, and I knew it was God, and I knew it was going to flood me over. And all I could do was just hope it was God and. <laughs> and let it happen. <laughs> and I found so much more peace in that. I found the strength that I was trying to make for myself all along by trying to uh, have plans B through Z and not just sticking with God's plan. It's uh, preparation with God means trusting that He's prepared. <laughs> doesn't mean us trying to run off and do everything ourselves, trying to be ready for anything. 
And there's times God will tell us to prepare for this or for that. Yeah, that doesn't mean we just disregard what God said and be like, ah, you got this, God. That is stupid. But uh, soon as uh, soon as my heart lined up with what he was wanting to pour into it, that was when I got what I needed. That was that was when I heard him. I mean, up until then, it was, it was kind of like a six-year-old just throwing a fit about why they can't stay up until 4 a.m. playing video games. And then the parents just watching. Like, well, they're going to play out eventually, and they'll just fall asleep, and that'll be that. It was kind of like that. Man. It was just God was just waiting for me to, to finish. Not that I was really throwing that kind of fit. Well, it was a fit, but not really emotional. It was like an intellectual fit. He was like, God, I want to know about this, and I need to be prepared for this, this, and this. And I know I want to know why this is going to happen, and I want to know how this is going to happen. And I want to know when. I need a timeline. I need a frame. I need some blueprints for this whole thing so I can start thinking about how to be prepared and how to approach this. And God's like, I'll wait. So, <laughs> so he waited for about four months. <laughs> ah, sure enough, I came back around. And got what I needed four months ago. <sighs> you know, seems like uh, a lot of people have trouble hearing God. Or they don't know how, or they're not sure they are, or anything like that. And uh, I know how that feels. Ah, man. I remember uh, when I was still living in Washington, man, spending all that time in prayer. And then I heard. These other people were moving to Tulsa. And I was asking God. And I didn't hardly know how to hear God then, man. I was, I was hoping. <laughs> and uh, I'm doing the best I could with what I knew. <laughs> I was just hoping I heard God when I moved down here. I <laughs> That's all I had going. Ah, and even since I moved down here, I, every time I think I hear God, it's like, God, I sure hope that's you. But it's about exercising the faith that we have where we're at. That's how we gain confidence in hearing God. There was a, there was a little home meeting up in Washington. And there was this dude. He had a, he had some kind of a degenerative bone thing going on. I'm not, I don't remember what it was, but he had trouble walking. He had like issues with his knees and his legs. And so you know these little home meetings. Of course, God showed up, and it was all emotional and boohoo. And I was all fiery and full of God because I had just discovered him. And I heard God tell me to pray for that man. So I went over there, put my hands on his knee, started praying. Waited for him to stand up. Waited for some kind of electricity to move through my hands. Pray a little harder. Still waiting. Still praying. Uh, nothing happened. <laughs> uh, not that God didn't tell me to pray for him, but uh, I don't know if he did or not. If he did, it was so he could teach me I had not arrived in a matter of however many weeks I had been praying in tongues at that point. <sighs> I got a bunch of those stories. Like the time I was praying... 
God told me to call up one of my friends. So I called him up. Hey, Pete, what's going on? Nothing. What, uh, what are you up to? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Oh, nothing's, uh, nothing's going on? No, just enjoying today. <laughs> All right, well, uh, uh, I'm getting another call. Bye. <laughs> Turns out that wasn't God. <laughs> How are you going to know when to be wrong if you don't act on it? How are you going to know when you're right? And we can't. We can't live our whole life just wondering, trying to stand on the tightrope. There's been so many times that I thought I heard God, but I didn't do a single thing about it because I wasn't sure. And uh, there have been some missed opportunities because of that. But ultimately, God sat me down one day and told me that was one of the best things that I could do until I do have more confidence in hearing Him. Because, man, we... We start digging into that place of peace with God. We start praying, man. Things just kind of start settling down. And then it starts getting easier to hear God. And he'll say something. And then you'll be like, whoa, that, that can't be God. That's a, oh, no. Oh. So, you know, maybe we'll stop praying for a little while. We start praying again, start settling down, settling down. To start hearing God. He says the same thing. I'll freak out again. Man, he'll do that for a while with you until you're sure you've heard him. And then he'll be like, all right, time for a little bit of action. What you going to do? And then, and then we can't do nothing again. We can't just put it on hold, put it on the back burner. Then it's time to do something. Whether we're whether we're 100% sure or not, man, there's been uh, plenty of times where I was 15, 20% sure it was God. <laughs> they came through. Man, I moved halfway across the country just hoping it's God. I didn't, I didn't know, man. It's not like some ray of sunshine came down through my bedroom ceiling and God told me this, this is what I want from you it's just there's something inside that came up it wasn't something that came down from heaven it's okay to not know what you're going to look like when God's done with you It's okay to not know what you're going to look like when God's done carving some of this stuff off whatever the next step is. Do we trust God enough to take the next step? That's really all that matters. If he said he wants the best for us, good things in mind, bright future, we got to give him a chance to prove it. It's all right to, uh, to just trust God where you're at and not try and... God doesn't expect us to move mountains a year after we get saved. Man, it's a, uh, it's a progressive thing. What he expects us to do is to act on the truth that he's given to us so far. <sighs> and now we're uh, coming to a point in the times where truth is uh, 
we sit on it for too long, man, it's it's going to start turning against us. You know, there was a, a bunch of farms around where I grew up. And there would be these uh, these little runoff ditches around the crops. And sometimes water would just collect and just stay there and stagnate. We ended up, the, up there it was just called still water. Because it was still, it was stagnating, it was rotting. And it was collecting crap and just turning into a gross cesspool. Turns out there's a town called Stillwater in Oklahoma. <laughs> I try not to uh, to connect those two dots, but anyway, that Stillwater man. That's when you get that truth from God. It's like a nice refreshing drink of water, is it not? After a long hard day. We keep sitting on that water and sitting on that water, man. It's uh, it's gonna turn rancid. There's that time. That time's coming. We can't. I don't know if I can say it enough. We can't just keep straddling the fence, knowing that God loves us. Man, we have to act on the truth that God's trusted us with so he can trust us with more. So we can get more from him. So we can be more effective in reaching other people to introduce them to God. Man, we can't overlook the step that he's given us to do next. We can't be looking four, five, six steps ahead. We've got to look the next step. Because that's that's what we have the strength for, the, the knowledge, the wisdom, the hope, the love. Whether that next step is as simple as just paying for the groceries for the person behind you, you know, whatever it is. If it means just spending five more minutes in prayer with God, or setting 10 minutes aside throughout the day, skipping a meal, skipping dessert, whether it means trusting Him with your emotions, if that's the next step, man, who are we to say our priorities are better than what God has in mind for us? We keep thinking like that, man, that truth that he's given us, that revelation, it's going to stagnate. It's going to turn against us. We're supposed to be a conduit for everything God has. It's, what God has for us isn't supposed to stop with us. We're supposed to keep paying it forward. Don't be afraid, or uh, <laughs> or humbled by what God has, what God wants you to do next. So, what if He thought you were going to do something a little more important, something bigger? And God just wants you to do something simple. Do we know more than God? Man, we may as well let God build us from the ground up instead of from the knees up. Or from the waist up. We ain't going to be stable. What he wants us to do, we're not going to be able to stand underneath it on our own. We're going to be able to do it because God has made us able. And God has made us able because we've allowed him to make us able. And that means starting small, starting simple no matter how much you may offend somebody's lofty sense of pride and how much they have accomplished, how intellectual they are. 
how mature they are. God sees right through that crap and cuts right to the base of the matter. No sense playing games with him. <laughs> Save yourself the time. I've tried. Try playing games. Don't work. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about it. So... Make a list. Of the things that are in the way of you and God. The things you're aware of. Whether you want them to be in the way or not. Man, you spend you spend time praying. God's going to answer that prayer by pointing out what, what's in the way. <laughs> If it was easy, there wouldn't be a number, probably in the thousands, of mm. people that have left just the prayer center over finding themselves in prayer because they were what's in the way. But make a list, man. Give it, uh, put some substance behind the things that are between you and him. That'll help put it in perspective. And then you'll be like, well, there's this list. It's kind of, well, look at this list. Now look at God. And all the promises God said. What am I doing worrying about this? Give God something to help you tackle instead of just those intangible floating emotions that are like, well, I have fear. Okay, <laughs> fear about what? <laughs> Man. We aren't going to do much good for others with God until... God's done some work in us. You can't... Somebody's not supposed to live in a house that's quarantined. That house is a danger. It's a hazard. It's not meant to be a benefit for people. So we got to let God rebuild us so that we can shelter people that haven't been in this as long, people that don't know as much, people that are just new. That's what this is about. And uh, it's supposed to cost us something We've got all, all of eternity. So what are we doing slacking off now? It's the only time we have to make a difference in other people. We'll stop with the guilt trip for a couple weeks. So, love you guys, and uh, thanks for praying for me. See you.